Howdy again everyone and welcome to another lens review, this time the Brighton Star 16mm f2.8. It's a manual focus, full frame, ultra wide angle, bright aperture lens for mirrorless cameras. So that is Sony E, Canon RF, Nikon Z, Leica M and L mount cameras. It has a bargain price of only 250 US dollars, make it potentially a really interesting little option, especially as manually focusing such a wide angle lens isn't so difficult. What on earth is its quality going to be like though? Let's run it through its paces and take a look. I'd like to thank Brighton Star for sending me a copy of this lens for evaluation. As usual though, this will be a totally independent review, taking an honest look at both its strengths and weaknesses. On a full frame camera, 16mm is a gapingly ultra wide angle field of view, useful particularly for certain landscape and architecture photography, and even a bit of astrophotography too, particularly when shooting at f2.8. So this could be a seriously fun lens for any full frame photographer who's up for a challenge. The build quality of this thing is utterly typical for a low budget Chinese manual focus lens, which isn't really a bad thing. There's loads of metal in its construction and as a result, despite its small size, it weighs just under 500 grams or just over a pound. The metal lens mount has no weather sealing and no electronic contacts. As I mentioned, it's a completely manual lens. The metallic manual focus ring turns very smoothly and a little heavily and with just the right precision for such a wide angle optic, it's really quite easy to focus this thing but of course, it will take added time over an autofocus lens. The lens doesn't really have a huge focus range, but some good news is that it doesn't show much in the way of focus breathing, as you can see here. In front of that, we have an equally metallic aperture ring, which turns very smoothly. I do wish these Chinese lenses had clicks to their aperture rings, although admittedly a smooth turning one can be useful for video work. The aperture ring has eight iris blades to it. The lens does have a 72mm filter thread, which would be useful, but unfortunately there doesn't seem to be any way to remove the metallic lens hood, which is a huge shame, as it would make attaching any filter very, very difficult. So that's a bit of a serious design flaw. You could get a filter on there, but it would be really, really difficult to get it off again. The lens does come with a metal front cap though, which fits onto the front very snugly. Overall, as I mentioned before, this is absolutely bog standard build quality for a low budget Chinese manual focus lens. As soon as you get used to manually focusing, it works perfectly well, but I wish it were easier to use filters with. Anyway, what's more important is image quality. Let's test it out on my Sony a7R 3 camera with its 42 megapixel full frame sensor. In camera corrections are not available with this lens. At f2.8, the middle of the image shows quite good contrast and detail is quite high, although we definitely see a little ghosting here on contrasting edges. Corner image quality somewhat falls apart, unfortunately, as you can see. Stop down to f4 for no real improvement except for a bit more brightness. Back in the middle though, contrast and sharpness now look great. Stop down to f5.6 for perfect image quality in the middle. Back in the corners, things are looking a little clearer but still not good. Stop down to f8 though and sharpness becomes acceptable with a little colour fringing on contrasting edges and stop down to f11 for the best image quality the lens can offer. That is a dark aperture though. Stop down as far as f22 and the image gets softer due to the effect of diffraction. Overall, well, the lens puts in quite a poor image quality performance here, especially considering that on a wide angle lens you really do want some sharp image quality in the corners to come into play. The silver lining though is that the lens does at least get quite sharp across the field at f11, so landscape photographers won't be left without any options. Ok, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. The perceptive among you will have noticed that my earlier test chart was looking a little distorted. That's because the lens's projection is pretty messy here with some particularly strong warping in the image corners. Also, vignetting is very strong at f2.8. At f4 and f5.6, those image corners become much brighter, but that's actually as bright as they get, so you will probably want to do some corrections in editing. Let's take a look now at close up image quality. The lens can focus down to 30 centimeters. That's a bit further than average for an optic of this kind, and it won't really be any good for getting fun, wide angle, close up pictures. 
At f2.8, the close-up image quality looks a bit ghostly, however stop down to f4 for a huge improvement. Let's see how well the lens works against bright lights now. Unfortunately, when shooting at f2.8, as you often will in the dark, the lens shows a lot of flaring and glaring of all different kinds that really intrude on your image. However, stop down to f4 to see a big difference in contrast. While we are working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. You can already see in this image some of those crazy flaring artifacts. Well, in a moment when we stop down, you will see them clearing up. Anyway, in the corners of the image we see a little coma smearing on bright points of light that join in the general mushiness of the corner image quality. Stop down to f4 for the worst of that smearing to go away, although obviously the softness is still there. Let's zoom out and look for sun stars now. Some good news is that 8 point sun stars are already emerging at f4. At f5.6 they look lovely and clear, and at f11 and f16 they look lovely and strong, so that is at least one strength of the tested lens. And finally, bokeh. Due to the lens's long minimum focus distance it's quite difficult to get out of focus backgrounds here. When you do though, they're definitely a bit on the busy side, not especially smooth. Overall, well, I think you've probably got this lens's number by now. Its optics are really quite low quality, some of the lowest I've seen on a 16mm lens, but on the flip side, it's certainly a very, very inexpensive lens. So if you own a full frame camera and you want an ultra wide angle lens just for occasional use and you're happy to stop it down to f11 or so in critical situations then it could work for you. Thanks for watching everyone, as usual I hope you found that video helpful. If you do find my reviews helpful, find yourself catching them all the time, then please do consider checking out my Patreon page. I put all kinds of exclusive bonus content on there for my supporters, and of course they get to feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside for being a part of helping these reviews keep on trucking. Take care and God bless everyone.